Mother-in-law My neighbor is already over 60. I have known her for more than 20 years and, roughly speaking, I grew up with her. In the new year I was left alone and decided to go to a neighbor Ekaterina Sogivna, a lonely grandmother of our entrance. She is a kind, neat woman, and generally a pleasant person in her own right. After the chiming of the clock, we talked to her about everything that could be remembered, in particular, about friends. So she told me the story. She had a childhood friend, Masha. They separated when they entered school. The time is post-war, telegrams are expensive, letters take a long time, and of all the summer entertainment, a cottage and a garden. At the time Masha got married, gave birth to a son, and Ekaterina Sergeevna was still single, so she decided to go to a friend's house, after writing letters to her. Apparently, Masha's last letter came when she was already on the train, so she did not learn some news. She arrived in the village, almost breaking her legs as she stomped across the clearing to her. I found the house where Masha's parents-in-law lived, and where, in fact, my family spent the summer, went into the yard, knocked on the house silence. And somehow she felt uneasy. The heat, the sun, and a cold sweat ran down my back. She put it all down to climate change, but thought that the owners would not be angry if she went into the house to wait for them. Fortunately, the village is small, mostly visited only in the summer, or only old people live there. Passed, greeted in silence and went to the kitchen to lay out gifts and boil the kettle. During this business, Ekaterina Sergeyevna did not notice how the evening began. Sitting, drinking tea, looking out the window. Then, once again when I looked out the window, I saw Tatyana Valerievna, Masha's mother-in-law, and I was surprised that she didn't notice her and why she was working late in the garden. She opened the window, and the curtains started whipping her face. Katerina Sergeyevna, waving her hand, shouts, saying, Tatyana Valerievna, drop your hoe, and let's go and drink tea with city sweets. And she went around the corner of the house in silence, still with the hoe. Well, Ekaterina Sergeyevna ran to meet her, but there was no one in the hall. And silence. She stood there for 20 minutes waiting, but went back to the kitchen with a lack of understanding, what is it? When it was quite dark, Ekaterina Sergeyevna became quite nervous. My friend and family are not there, Tatyana Valerievna has disappeared somewhere, and going to the station at night by train was still a dubious pleasure. She stayed the night. In the morning, before getting out of bed, Ekaterina Sergeyevna notices a complete mess in the house. In addition to her and the scattered household items, broken dishes, even the old stove was cleared of all soot. I have a feeling that my mother walked. Well, you never know what kind of animal got into the house, and what kind of food was looking for, in the villages this is a matter of everyday life. Having tiddied up so as not to annoy the owners, Ekaterina Sergeyevna looked into the other rooms, but Tatyana Valerievna was nowhere to be found. I walked around the garden, there is no room. She wasn't alone. In general, that evening, with a heavy heart, she took the train and went home. And at home there was a letter with the deepest apologies of her friend Masha that they would not be able to accept her as a guest since in the spring they took Tatyana Valerievna to the hospital with a stroke. Later, she received a letter that her mother-in-law was buried in the summer. That's how my neighbor went to visit a friend. That was the end of it, and the beginning of a more gruesome story about a hospital where World War I soldiers died. Mother-in-law